بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ومن استعين على من الدنيا والدين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين uh, Today we are covering the topic containers and utensils uh, This means the, the utensils that we use for drinking or for eating like plates, like cups and etc. So the Sheikh is discussing about that what is the ruling for that so he says it is permissible to use all types of containers and utensils save for gold and silver ones so it is permissible to use all containers and utensils to eat to use except containers and utensils that are made of gold and silver okay so containers that are made of gold and silver it is not permissible to eat with it yeah, you know put your food onto the container and then you eat it is not allowed as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says uh, For gold and silver ones as it is specifically forbidden to use them for eating or drinking While they may be useful for other purpose Right So for eating and drinking it is not permissible for the, the containers to be used Or you use a spoon or cup that is made of gold that you drink water Or a plate that is made of gold or silver and you eat with it and the wisdom behind really is uh, is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, because the Prophet sallallahu said, okay? Although the, the scholars, some of the scholars, they say the reason behind, the wisdom behind that is because of its extravagance, because gold is so, so value. Uh, so, you know, when the person has, has these containers made of gold or silver, it is a kind of extravagance. And the other reason why is because the Prophet ﷺ explained that in Hadith and he said this is for the non-believers in the dunya, they use it, but for the believers, we use it in, in Akhirah. So that is another reason why we, it's not allowed to use it. So any utensils that you eat food or you drink, it is not allowed to, to eat with it. They even narrated the Prophet ﷺ said, do not drink from gore or silver containers and do not wear silk or brocade garments as they are for them in the world and for you in the hereafter, exactly. So Hudayfa radiallahu anhu says, do not, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, do not drink from gold or silver containers and do not wear silk, also silk. Wearing silk is uh, forbidden for men, not for women. And wearing gold is forbidden from men, not for women. So wearing gold as a chain or as you know anything for men, it is not allowed. As for women, it is allowed. And wearing silk, as for men, is not allowed. For men, it's allowed. And the reason behind that is women, they are, uh, they are allowed to beautify themselves with this. The Sharia, the law, allows them to beautify themselves for this. So they are allowed to wear gold and, <clears throat> and silk also as harir. Okay? But for men, it is not allowed. For men, they are allowed only to, ha to have or wear uh, silver uh, that is made of, uh, a ring that is made of silver. So that is allowed. Um Salama narrated the message of Allah said, the one who drinks from a silver container only gurgles into his stomach the fire of hell. Um Salama said, Prophet said, whoever drinks with a container that is made of, made of silver, so the hell fire or the fire is burning in his, in his belly. You see, the Prophet says, drinks from a silver container only gurgles into gurgles means the, the sound the sound of the water, the sound of anything that you're drinking that's made in, in the stomach, that's called gaggles. It's just like that, that the fire is gurgling in your, in, your, in your stomach, in your belly. So when you're eating or when you're drinking with containers that are made, uh, that are made of silver or gold, Prophet Sallallahu says, the one who eats or drinks from a silver or gold container, so, Muslim noted that the none of the narrators made any mention of eating or gold except in the narration of Ibn Mushir. Oh. So, Imam Muslim, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, he says the, 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 the narration that says gold and eating with gold, it is, uh, it is a shad, it is something that, is, uh, that has not been narrated by the majority of the narrators. It is a person who is called, uh, a person who is named by Mushir is the one who has uh, specifically said that. This additional inform information contradicts what has been narrated. Sheikh Al-Bar Rahmatullah says, this additional information contradicts what has been narrated in a stronger form. 
Shaykh Ibn Rahmatullah Ali also speaks and says this narration which says because most of the hadith they say silver they don't say uh, gold although it is it is right so majority of the hadith they say about gold and you know eating with gold utensils it doesn't say drinking or it doesn't say silver that's what it means the additional information contradicts what has been narrated in a stronger form although it is correct in its meaning based on what can be derived from the hadith this is because eating and gold are greater and more serious issues than drinking and silver uh, as it is obvious <laughs> Right. <clears throat> so we are moving to the next one, which is purification for the prayer. Okay, we have, we have finished the utensils, containers. So the Sheikh is moving to the purification for the prayer. Okay, this is Tahara. This is one of the one of the most important uh, topics in 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 in, 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 the, in the topic of Tahara. Okay, how to purify yourself in the Salah and before the Salah. When it comes to wudu, when it comes to wudu, like ablution, or when you are preparing yourself for the salah, purification for the prayer. Ibn Umar <coughs> narrated that he heard the Prophet Sallallahu say, the prayer is not accepted without purification. Prayer will not be accepted without purification. As the Prophet Sallallahu says in the hadith, Miftah al-Salati al-Tuhur, and the key of the salah is purification. So prayer will not be accepted without purification. For instance, if a person prays without purification, and then you finish your prayer, and then you can later find out, find out that you have not you have prayed without wudu, then you have to make up the salah again, because it is uh, it is conditions of the salah. It is conditions of the salah. One of the things that you need to fulfill before you stand for the prayer is purification, purifying your body, purifying your garments, your clothes, and purifying. The place you are, you are you are praying. All these things need you need to purify yourself. Okay, so Ibn Umar narrated that he heard the Prophet ﷺ say, "The prayer is not accepted without purification." There are two forms of such purification: purification by using water and purification by using soil. Okay, so when we are purifying ourselves, there are two ways we purify. One is with with water. And the other one is soil. And soil is all, only applied when there's no water, when there's no access to water. You cannot use soil to purify yourself, like tayammum, okay? Only if you are not accessible to water, or if you cannot use water. And otherwise, it is, uh, otherwise you have to use water. If the water is there, then the purification, the, the salah will not be accepted. So purification is, and the other one is, uh, as for purification, and the other one is soil, yeah. As for purification with water, it is either ablution or bathing. So when he's, Sheikh is talking about uh, purifying yourself, uh, it is either to do with your bath, the way you bath, and the bath you're talking about is the bath that is, uh, that is the sharia, meaning that is like janaba or something like that, okay? And wudu also. So that is the case uh, which is, the salah will not be accepted without one purifying himself, as the Prophet ﷺ says. So the first one is ablution. It is characteristics. Yani the way to make ablution. Characteristics means the way to make ablution in, in details, in the way the Prophet ﷺ has done. Okay, everything we do, we go through the Prophet ﷺ. When we pray, we go through the Prophet ﷺ. When we fast, we go through the Prophet ﷺ. When we're making wudu, the same thing. Okay? So, uh, uh, making wudu the way the Prophet ﷺ has, has uh, made wudu. So, the de detailed description of the wudu of the Prophet ﷺ. So, he says, Humaira, the ex-slave of Uthman, stated that Uthman called for the for a pitcher of water, he had made ablution. So Uthman anhu, one of the great uh, companions of Prophet was demonstrating the way to make wudu when he was the Khalifa. When he was the Khalifa. And he was teaching others. Because the Prophet did the same. And the Sahaba, they used to teach others, young ones or people who are 
not uh, are not aware of the wudu and they used to teach them in practical way they used to get water and they used to wash their their body that's the way used to do so Uthman radiallahu anhu was teaching was showing the way to make wudu and this is explained by his slave so he said he asked for water he asked for water Uthman radiallahu anhu and then he washed his hands three times his hand three times this is sunnah three times okay we'll be going through the wudu of Uthman radiallahu anhu and everything he does he does it in three times which is the complete wudu in, in complete okay the, the the best way and the sunnah way but you can also do twice or you can also do once which is the minimum way minimum way so he washed his hands three times then he rinsed his mouth and inserted water into his nose okay mud mother he rinsed his mouth put water in his mouth and then and, th and threw it back okay and then he put water into his nose also okay that's called al istin shakh okay three times then he washed his face three times three times from earlobe to earlobe and from the forehead to the chin this is called the face so from here to the chin and from the earlobe to this earlobe all this is called face and it is it's obligatory to wash the face so he washed three times Uthman then he washed his he, then he washed uh, his face three times then he washed his right arm until the elbow three times so he washed his right hand to the elbow with the elbow with the elbow to the elbow doesn't mean with the elbow including the elbow three times okay that's, that is that is the obligatory part of washing the hand so if you wash at here the middle or you know before the elbow the wudu will not be valid so he washed then he washed his left arm until his elbows three times again three times then he wiped his head the way he wiped his head was he put his hands together and he put the water and wet with the wet of the water with his hands and then he started from his forehead back all the way down to the uh, back of the head and then he brought it back again up to the forehead so this was the way the Prophet ﷺ has done okay uh, you may see also some Muslims doing uh, differently because of some of the dahib, which sometimes we say they will take water and they will put it in the forehead of the of the of the head, like Madhab Shafi'i and others. You just put it here three times. You see, someone who's making wudu from the Shafi'i Madhab, you'll see. You just do like that, okay? But why does that come from? The Prophet ﷺ once had a a turban, turban, and it is all uh, around his, his head. So it was difficult to untie it and there was a space on his forehead okay that you could see his his hair okay so what he did is he, he took water and then he wiped over the turban okay he didn't want it and then he also wiped over the the space or the the, the hair that was out so maybe some of that mother have they took that that stand that it is allowed to to them but the sooner way is to wipe it over from the beginning here up to the end and then bring it back up to the forehead that's the sunnah that's the way you have to do it okay then he did he washes then he did his left hand okay he then said then he wiped his head then he washed his right foot until the ankle three times okay so he washed his right foot to the ankles and then he did the same to the his left foot the same thing okay and he also wiped over his ears also when he wiped over his his head this way and straight away went to his ears and he wiped over in and out okay and then he washed his right foot and then he moved to the, his left foot so this is the way to make wudu this is the way to make wudu you start with washing your hands and then you start rinsing your mouth and your nose okay putting water and then you start washing your face okay as we have described three times and then you start wiping over your sorry you start washing your right hand uh, till elbow with the elbow and then the same thing to the left hand and then you wipe over your head your hair so beginning from the forehead down up to again back and then you wash with the ears together 
Okay? And then you wash your, your right foot up to the ankles and your left foot up to the ankles. So this is the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has done al wudu Then he said, whoever, the Messenger Allah said, whoever makes ablution like this, ablution of mine, and then stands and prays two units of raka'ah, of prayer with no other thoughts coming to his mind, then his previous sins will be forgiven. So when you do the, when you do the wudu, as you finish the wudu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you do the way I have done, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way I have done, proper way of wudu I have done, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and then you stand up and you pray to raka'ah. This is called two raka'ah, raka'ah, two wudu. Okay? This is raka'ah, sunnah, for wudu. Okay? And then after that, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's nothing thought in his hand, in his, in his heart. Meaning, there's nothing uh, that he's thinking in, in, in a way of the dunya. His heart is not in a way of dunya. It is completely uh, uh, nothing in, in his heart to do with the dunya. Okay, so if you do that, you do that proper wudu, and then you pray two rak'ah, and while your heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no with the dunya, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, your sins will be, your previous sins will be forgiven. So this is an opportunity for ourselves, that we practice the sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we practice the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have made wudu, and then you stand up and you pray two rak'ah, without having anything in your heart to do with the dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you all past sins. It's something very good. So with regard to that, any, anything you do, this is, this is outside the major sins, okay? It's not the major sin. Because major sins need to be, major, major sins are bound to Tawbah, okay? They are bound to Tawbah. They are bound to repentance. Major sins will not be accepted like that. Major sins, you have to contact Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say, oh Allah, I made a mistake, okay? But these are the minor sins. These are minor. So major sins are out of that. It is only minor sins, sins that are minor. Okay? So if you do that, the Prophet ﷺ said, all your sins will be forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ said. So now he goes on to the uh, conditions of making wudu. Okay? The conditions of making wudu. Right. Conditions for the, cor for, for the correctness of the ablution. First thing you have to do is you have to come with intention. Everything we are doing uh, to do with worship, there are three three conditions. The first one is near. Sorry, the first one is iman. You believe Allah. So if a person comes into the masjid and a non-Muslim prays, his prayer will not be accepted. He's not a believer. If he gives sadaqah, his sadaqah will not be accepted. Although he has done something good. Because the first condition is you have to believe. They not be accepted. So anything good he does in Islam and he's not a Muslim, it will not be accepted. The second condition is al-ikhlas, sincere, good intention. Why you're doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're sharing something, someone else with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for either showing off or something else, that amal, that actions will not be accepted. That will be null voided. Okay? So any actions that is not for Allah, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Nor for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that actions or that good action will not be accepted. The third one is, which is more important, which is important also, is following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, following the way he did sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مُتَابَعَةُ رَسُولَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَّمْ How did he pray? How did he fast? How did he do his hajj and umrah? And on all those things. Come and... Uh, the actions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So these three things should be fulfilled. So the first thing you have to do when you're making wudu is intention. The reason why you're doing wudu is your intention is to pray. Your intention is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If it is not there, the, 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 the wudu will not be valid, plus the salah will not be valid. It's not, not void. Okay? It's nothing, as if you have not prayed. So it's intention. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, valid all actions are based on intention. It is not sanctioned to actually state the intention. Okay, so it is not sanctioned to actually state the intention. The way it's discussed here is it is not must or it's not advisable or recommended to state the intention. Meaning that you shouldn't say na way to verbally, na way to al wudu. He says that's not allowed. And that's, that's not the sunnah. The sahaba, the prophet, none of them have ever said that. When they are praying, they have never ever said that. 
Because niyyah fil qalb, intention is in the heart. When you, are, when you are coming from your home and you are coming into the masjid, your intention was to pray dhuhr. You come into the masjid, even if you say nothing else, your intention was to pray dhuhr and that is your intention. So verbally, there's no statement that a person has to say from his mouth, or rather from his heart. Intention is in the heart. That's what is spoken. To actually state the intention as such has not been confirmed by the Prophet. ﷺ. Of course, the Prophet ﷺ did not tell the Sahaba. Listen, when you are doing that, the Prophet ﷺ is the one who taught us. He says, Say Bismillah. Read uh, when you're going to the salah, uh, when you're making wudu, you have to say Bismillah. He didn't say you have to say Nawaitu. Anwi. I intend. If it was uh, supposed to, you would have said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But never have I said. The second thing is mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah. One has to say Bismillah. One has to say Bismillah. لِقَوْلِهِ لَا صَلَاةَ لِمَنْ لَا وُضُوءَ لَهُ وَلَا وُضُوءَ لِمَنْ لَمْ يَذْكُرِ اسْمِ اللَّهِ He says, there's no prayer for the one who does not have ablution and there's no ablution for one who did not mention the name of Allah. Okay? The hadith Hassan. It comes from different ways, although ma majority of the chains of this hadith from every angle is weak. But if you put together all these uh, chains or all these, uh, they, will, they will have the, the level of hasan. Okay? So when you are making wudu, after making your intention, the second thing you have to do is bismillah, before you start to say bismillah. You don't need to say bismillah rahman rahim. Bismillah, that's it. There's no prayer for the one who does not have ablution. There's no, there's no ablution for one who does not mention. Okay, that doesn't mean that if you don't say Bismillah, the, the wudu or ablution will be invalid. No, it is not. It is, means it is highly recommended. It is a, another way of saying it is highly recommended. But if you don't say, you just lose some reward. But your, your wudu will be valid. Will be valid. Third is to perform the acts one after other without a lengthy break between the different acts. Yeah. So when you're washing your face, you wash your face, and then after that, in sequence way, you wash your hand, your right hand, left, left uh, hand, that way. Okay? But if there's a delay, a long delay, then you have to start again. So you wash your face, and you start speaking to someone for five minutes, ten minutes, and then, no, you shouldn't. You, should, you have to go and redo it, or you have to go, go and make wudu again. So he says, it should be, uh, uh, the acts one of another without a lengthy break in the different acts. So it should be have that sequence of one following other. It shouldn't be that lengthy, okay? Khalid ibn Ma'adan narrated the Prophet saw so a man prayer while there was a spot about the size of a coin in his foot that he had not washed. So the Prophet ordered him to repeat his ablution. So the Prophet saw so this man after he finished making wudu, he saw an equal or the size of a coin in his food that he has not washed. Just like that. And it happens sometimes, you think you have washed, but it's just like that. And Prophet ﷺ said, you go and wash your feet. He didn't go to wash his feet, he went to go uh, from the beginning, washing the body. So it means also, if you miss a small part of the places where it is obligatory to wash, then the water will not be valid. If you don't wash your nose, or your ear, or one of your finger, Unless there is an excuse for that. Unless there is an excuse for that. There's no problem if there is an excuse for that. But if there is no excuse, that's why they say if you put something on your, on your nails, especially for girls or women, if you put something on your nails other than henna, you have to remove it. Because the conditions, one of the conditions is the water have to reach the body. And that's not fulfilled. And that is not fulfilled. In that case, it, you have to take it off and then wash it again. So the Prophet ﷺ said, he saw the man and he said, he said, he ordered him to repeat his ablution and prayer. Right. So the obligatory components of the ablution, okay? So the ablution, wudu has got two components, okay? Obligatory and recommended. Obligatory is anything that you break or you don't do, the wudu will not be valid. The wudu will be valid. Recommended is anything, is an extra reward. So if you do it, it's fine. If you don't do it, it's no problem. Okay? But obligatory is something we, if you miss, then you have to do it again. So, one is washing the face 
This includes rinsing, rinsing the mouth and the nose. <coughs> washing the caffeine, that is not obligatory. Okay, that's washing the face. The first one is washing the face. Plus washing your mouth and the nose. To some of the scholars who say it is obligatory, and some of the scholars say it is not obligatory, it's sunnah. Like Mother Shafi, it says it is washing the nose and the mouth is sunnah. And some of the scholars, they say it is wajib to wash your mouth and sunnah. The reason why is the mouth and the nose are part of the face. It's a part of the face. So if you don't wash, then you have not washed your face. Or you have not completed washing your face. Which is a valid, a very good valid reason for that madhab. Okay? And others say, no, it is not must. That, and the other thing they say, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to do it all the time. When he used to wash his face, he used to wash, rinse his mouth and his nose. So that shows also it is obligatory. Washing the arms until the elbows. <coughs> okay? Your arms until the elbows. So this is, this place is the one you have to wash, which is obligatory also. Okay? For the right hand and for the, for the left hand also. Okay, four and five, wiping all of the head and the ears are considered part of the head. Okay, and not considered part of the face while making ablution, right? Wiping all of your head. As we have said, the sunnah is, we have said, you have start from, the, from, from your front, from your forehead, to the back, to the front. That's the sunnah, that's the majority of the scholars. There's some of the scholars say that you have just wipe, uh, wipe over or over your, your forehead, Okay. The six is washing both feet until the ankles. You wash your feet up to the ankles. Okay? And that's also the obligatory, obligatory part of the feet also. Okay? Some of these are based on the Quranic verse. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amnu da qumtum ila salati faqsilu wujuhakum wa aidiyakum. Ila al marafiqi wa msahu bi ruusikum wa arjulakum ila al kaabain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When you intend to offer the prayer, wash your face and your arms up to the elbows. Rub by passing wet hands over your he heads and your feet up to the ankles, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who or you who believe when you are standing for the salah, eh? wash your face as obligatory, is a command. And command will be taken as, as an ob obligation. So if I tell you, wash this dish, it is a command. Unless there's something else that makes it, it's not a command. If I tell you, no, I didn't mean it. you have to wash it, it is com uh, it's not a command. But this shows it is a command. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladhina yaqum tu yasas faqsilu ujuhakum wa aidiyakum. And your hands, hands here, to the elbows. Ila al-marafiqi wa msahu bi ruusikum wa rajulakum. And pass or wipe over your head and your legs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the, uh, to the, to the, to the uh, until to the, uh, what do you call it? To the ankles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And here, warjulakum, uh, it is conjected, connected to the head, uh, which means sometimes, and the scholar says this means when the person is making tayammum. Uh, so, sorry, when the person is making mas'ul khufay, that is the means. Or otherwise, we will understand uh, what the ayah means, we will we'll, 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 we'll see it or we will understand it the way the Prophet did it, because the Quran is interpreted by the Prophet. So here it doesn't mean that all you who believe wash your, uh, wipe over your head and your, your feet. It doesn't mean that way. Although the Shia are the ones who took it that way. We say that is not the, that is not the case. Except some of the ulama says if it means to mashal khufayn, wiping over the khuf, yes. But generally it means is to wash the feet. So if you are making wudu, you don't wash your feet, your salah will not be valid. How? The actions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if it meant that we should have wiped over the, ankle, the, the, the feet, the Prophet Sallallahu could have done it. So all the time Prophet Sallallahu used to make wudu, not, not must, all the time he used to, he used to wash his, his feet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says. So, طيب, rinsing the mouth and the nose are obligatory because in the Quran Allah has ordered the washing of the face and it is confirmed that the Prophet will always rinse the nose and mouth in every ablution. Yeah. As the ulama said, Prophet used to do it all the time when he was making wudu. He used to, when he was washing his face, he used to rinse his mouth and his, his nose, Prophet Everyone narrated and described how he made ablution, made mention of rinsing these two. It can be concluded that the washing of the face ordered in the Quran includes rinsing the mouth and nose. Yeah. So, 
the order of the Quran which says you have to wash your face, that means it is included. Uh, the, the nose and the, the, the mouth are included. That's what it says. Furthermore, the command to rinse these two are also found in the following statement of Prophet When one of you makes ablution, he should put water up his nose and then blow it out. Okay, so also he, he, he has quoted this hadith of Prophet said when one of you is making ablution, he should put water. He should put water means it is a command. It is, it is amr, his nose, and then blow it out. Okay? In ablution, you should put water well up your nose unless you are fasting. The Hadith Prophet says, يعني, When you are fasting, make istinshaq unless if you are fasting. When you are making wudu, make istinshaq, rinse your nose, unless if you are fasting. Why? Because the, the water may go through into your in, in, inside. Okay? When you make ablution, rinse your mouth, Prophet says, uh, inshallah, we'll stop it here. Jazakumullah khair, inshallah.